What's up guys and welcome back to Job Site Conditions right here on Deco Creek TV. My name's Jeff and on today's episode, we're gonna be showing you guys how to mix and apply vertical concrete. Now this is gonna be a step-by-step -step video with all the tools and equipment that you'll need. So stay tuned as you're gonna learn all about it. Buddy in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> so today's project rates as a three on our DIY meter and the product we're going to be using is this vertical concrete mix from DecoCrete. Now we could also use a Kurt bag carving mix to do the same thing if we wanted to. The vertical concrete has become really popular over the last 10 years because it just gives the installer tons of freedom to create pretty much anything they want. Now it can be applied around an inch thick for vertical stamping, or you can pile it on two or three inches thick and carve it up into rock formations, wood beams, stones, brick, tree bark, or pretty much whatever else you can dream up. Now the options with vertical concrete are virtually endless and there is no right or wrong way to carve concrete. Now the only way to get your techniques honed in is to mix them up and start playing. Now, when we started messing around with vertical concrete, I mean, there really weren't too many pre-made mixes out there. And we would usually end up sourcing a bunch of different materials uh, just to make our own mix. Now, things just have gotten a lot quicker and easier nowadays with pre-bag mixes because all we got to do now is just add water. Now the other great thing about vertical concrete is the variety of substrates that we can apply it to. I mean anything from masonry to wood or rebar frame structures, foam core, even drywall. Now the application techniques are pretty much the same on any of these and they will all need to be scratch coated but the prep work is going to vary uh, depending on the substrate. So here are a few rules that we follow. Always use tar paper and lath on wooden substrates. Make sure masonry substrates are thoroughly cleaned and always use a bonding primer. Foam core needs some extra strength, so we like to use our GFRC backer mix for the scratch coat just to give it some structure. Steel frame jobs need lath because the mix won't bond very well to metal. Now drywall needs to be primed all the time, but whether you need lath or not depends on how thick you're applying the mix, and we recommend lath for anything over one inch thick. Now the job site that we're going to today already has all this prep work done, so please check out this video right here for instructions on the scratch coat. Well, the tools and equipment that we're gonna need are a heavy duty mixer and a few large mixing tubs, some bucket scoops and a few different concrete trials to help apply the mix and smooth it out, and a set of vertical concrete stamps. Now when it comes to touch up and carving out the grout lines, well, we have a variety of different tools that we've accumulated over the years. Now, these tools aren't all necessarily even made for carving concrete and after you do a few jobs well you just kind of figure out which tools work better than others for you now one of the things i've always loved is looking through other vertical carvers toolboxes just to see all the cool interesting stuff that they use and a lot of it is even custom made that they've fabricated now if you're new at this uh, please just check out the vertical concrete page on our website for texturing and carving tools to get you started for today's project we're going to be using surebond 100 to prime the surface Deco Creek vertical concrete mix for the stamp coat, a few different grays just to color the stones, and D Shield Clear for the sealer. And don't worry, all these tools and products are all linked right down in the description below. With all that out of the way, it's time to head to the job site and get started. So we made it out here to the job site and you guys can see right behind me, this is what we're gonna be working on today, is this little seat wall. And you know, we poured these caps yesterday and got the scratch coat done. So this morning we're ready to get uh, straight to throwing up vertical mix. And this is also a Patios for Patriots job. And if you guys aren't familiar with Patios for Patriots, uh, please check them out on Facebook or go to patiosforpatriots.org, great organization. And so this entire uh, project that we're doing, uh, we poured a sidewalk yesterday, this circle, this is all getting donated uh, to a veteran. And so go check that them out. Now, as far as a, a few little things just to get started, we got some plastic down. This is important because, you know, this concrete isn't sealed yet uh, that we're working on and it's impossible to do this without getting a little bit on the ground. So we just want to cover everything up. Now, we're also going to be doing this little fire pit over here. And this is going to be a pretty cool technique we're going to do on this is we're actually, we're not going to be carving any of the stones. We're going to use stamps uh, to just to stamp this mix. So we're only going to be putting it on about a three quarter inch thick. If you guys were doing a full hand carve, you want to be more in that, you know, inch and a half range. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll some uh, various colors on those stones and then carve out the joints and that's gonna show the gray from underneath. So it's just gonna be a really cool technique, goes really fast, doesn't require any detailed carving or anything like that. Now the mix we're gonna be using today is uh, the vertical concrete mix from Decocrete. Uh, we could do the same thing with Kurt Bag carving mix. It would work completely fine. It's just that today, you know, it's a little bit smaller of a project. There's no reason to bring a ton of stuff to the job site. This is just one bag, just to add water, super easy to make. As far as uh, some tools we're gonna need, uh, you know, kind of the same thing you'd use for, uh, you know, any kind of vertical concrete, little pool trowels, uh, some bucket scoops, uh, but a lot of this stuff is just gonna get thrown up by hand and that's just the easiest way to get it up there. Um, we'll go ahead and spray a little bit of primer on our scratch coat first and we'll get to throwing up the mix. So this vertical mix is really easy to make. Uh, there's a little bit of a range, you know, anywhere from four and three quarter to five quarts of water. And we've actually got our big mixer today. That way we can mix a couple bags at a time. And you know, that's a good way of doing it. If you're just making one, you know, and putting on really thick, uh, it's just gonna take a while. Um, so all we need to do is just, you know, add the water to our uh, bucket. We're gonna drop in our mix and we're gonna mix it for two minutes, scrape the sides a little bit and then mix it again. And then once you kind of get this to the slump that you're looking for, it is important to let this fall set for about three minutes. And because what's gonna happen is when you do that, it's gonna tighten up a little bit again. And so let it set for three minutes, remix it, and we can give it a tiny bit of water at that point if we need. If it's good enough after remix, just go straight to the wall with it. And then, you know, we do wanna work somewhat quickly. We wanna get this stuff up on the wall, you know, within about 20 minutes after mixing it up. The great thing is we'll be able to stamp it almost right away. When it comes to throwing this stuff up on the wall, I like to break it down into two different steps. And the first one is gonna be uh, just a really thin coat that we're gonna use a trial and we're really gonna drive it into all those fingers from the scratch coat. And then we can follow this up uh, by just throwing handfuls of this mix right on the wall. So it's also important on this drive coat that we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. So we just wanna kinda do this uh, right as we go along. Now, once we got our, our stamp coat completely applied up there, we're just gonna take a trowel and just smooth it out a little bit. We're gonna stamp this, so we want this to be pretty flat so our stamps will set into it, right? We normally wouldn't make it this flat if we were gonna carve stones out of it because we wanna use those variations for the stones themselves. Now, in this case, you know, we are stamping this, we got it all flattened out nice, and we are gonna need to spray some release on this. This is just clear liquid release, and in order to actually push stamps into this, you know, release is gonna be required. When it comes to just, you know, carving a little bit with with our carving tools honestly you know, we don't really need to use much release for that so after we get the release on we're going to start by just running a texture roller over this and the reason we're doing that is just to give this um, a bunch of texture before we even start stamping this way we don't have to push our stamps all the way back in because the texture is already there if you guys have never stamped vertical concrete before please check out this episode right here and jason and greg will go through the whole thing so now that we got everything stamped, you can see we just got a little bit of touch up to do, you know, up along the tops and the bottoms where the stamps just didn't hit. And there's no right or wrong here. We're just gonna use this little skinny margin trial just to create, you know, our own joints. Again, for touch ups, you know, you just have to find whatever tool is working for you best at the time. Now, at this point, we're gonna have to let this set up just a little bit. You know, we're gonna roll this color on there, uh, but we're not gonna be able to do it right away. We need to at least let it skin over to the point where we're not messing anything up anymore. So we're just gonna roll this color up here and then we're just gonna follow it up again, just with this little margin trial to carve it out um, whatever works good for you at the time it's not always going to be this exact same tool you know vertical mix does have a tendency to crack a little bit especially in the summertime when it's drying out really fast so you know uh, building the tent creating some shade or just simply draping plastic over this will minimize that drastically and the great thing about this technique is now everything is completely colored and ready to go all we got to do is just let this cure out and then we'll put a little bit of sealer on it and everything is good to go well guys, that's a wrap for this week's show and our seat wall project is now complete. Special thanks to Paddos for Patriots for letting us hang out on their job site this week and thanks to you guys for watching these videos and man, we really appreciate all the support that you guys show to the channel. Please leave us a comment if we missed anything or if you have any questions about vertical concrete. For more information on in-depth live trainings of decorative concrete, please go to deco-crete.com and click on the training tab. If you guys found this video helpful, please let us know by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're already subscribed, don't forget about that bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and it really helps our channel out. So from all of us here at DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.